That's a definition of marketing. That's a true out of a, out of a book. It's got to be true. It's out of a book. Our, is our first definition of marketing is to find out what your customers want and then to give it to them. Do you know academies that try to do this or schools that try to do this? They're trying to be everything to everybody. Can we be everything to everybody? Second definition from Tim Cohn, one of the gurus of educational mar of marketing. Marketing is the invisible hand that moves products from sellers to buyers. Is that, what, is that what marketing is? This invisible hand that moves people from one side to the other? Who's the invisible hand? The Holy Spirit in the Adventist school system that speaks to the minds of parents and children to get them to buy into Adventist education. Taking actions to create, grow, maintain, defend, and own markets. Do we own markets? In the, in the marketing world, you have to own your market. Marketing is simply a war between, competi between competitors. You just define some conferences. building positive relationships, and generating compelling experiences. I kind of like that as marketing. Building positive relationships and generating compelling experiences. Here's my definition. Assessing the needs of the target market, potential customers, and deciding which needs can be met within the mission of the school and finding methods to meet those needs. Now there's a key word there. What is it? Mission of your school. I'm really strong in dissent in I kind of coined a, a phrase that we should we accept non-Adventist students in our schools? Do all non-Adventist children belong in our schools? No. When I was principal at TA, there'd be a shooting at Blair High School, and I'd have 50 parents, literally, lined up on the next morning to enroll their kids in our school. And they would have paid cash for the year to get their kids into Tacoma Academy. And the first thing I would do is I'd look the kid in the eye and say, do you want to be here? Blankety blank, no. Were they, what I call, are they a mission appropriate student? See, I think that we need to be really careful and only accept mission appropriate kids. Here's a, here's a question for you. Are all Adventist kids mission appropriate? No. Whoa. That's a scary one. But at one time they may be. Okay. If we deny them that, then we may not get that opportunity again. We don't get that opportunity. That's why we are afraid of this. Okay. The comment is they may not be mission appropriate right now, but if we let them into the school, we may help them to be mission appropriate. And so under that philosophy, all Adventist children are mission appropriate. All kids. all kids. What do you think? Adventist or not? All kids should be accepted into the school. Help me.
Okay? Did you hear that? The, the comment was, if we pre-label students as non-mission appropriate and do not accept them, even though they may have some outward, experience, outward uh, manifestations that you don't like, if you work with that student, you may get past that and find the real student behind there. That's paraphrasing. Mission appropriate. Mission appropriate. Every one of them failed the last day. Okay. Every one of them failed. Would they be accepted in our school? How many of us would accept prostitutes? I mean, David. How many times did Jesus have to cast demons out of Mary Magdalene? Okay. I have an answer here, but I want, to, I want to get through some of this. The comment was, so everybody hears, the, the tipping point is whether they want to be in your school. If they want to be there and they're not mission appropriate, then you should accept them. How many kids know what they want? How many kids know what they want? Stacy. appropriate because we don't have the facilities and the personnel to help that student. And that would then, and that's most of what, when I say that there are Adventists that are not mission appropriate, most of those, I would say, fall into the learning disabilities that we're not able to, to deal with. So where do we draw the line? So where do you draw the line? Good question. And where do they get And where do they go if we say no? All right. First of all, what's the, what's the biggest hurdle to my assertion that we should only accept mission appropriate kids? Say that again. Who defines mission appropriate? Do you know what the mission of your school is? Do you really know? Have you defined your mission? If you define your mission and those kids fall out outside of that mission, then you have to either redefine your mission or else those kids don't belong in your system. Does that make sense? If you define your mission clearly and the kids that you accept <coughs> fall outside of the mission that you have defined, are you doing those kids any favor by putting them in your school? No. I've done that so many times as a principal. Now, let me quickly hasten and say that I strongly believe that we need to take cases that fall outside of our mission. But they should be few that you work on on a personal level and that you think that they have the capacity to fit within your mission. Most of the kids that came from Blair High School, I would accept maybe one out of that 50 lined outside my door. If I accepted all 50 of those kids, would that have changed the character of Tacoma Academy? Yes. Would that have been fair to the parents that have not sent their kids to Blair High School because they want to keep their kids away from those influences. That wouldn't be fair, would it? Because I define my mission as a safe environment. If I accept every student that comes along because they want to be there, then I've broken my mission because my environment is now not, sa is not safe anymore. Because I've accepted all these kids in from the public school and now I have the exact same environment as the public school system. You see where I'm, where I'm coming from in defining your mission. Okay. So, so they're going to change the school unless you allow them to change the school. 
So then the, and the comment was, if you allow only those that want to come, and then you hold, the, hold to the rules, and then they will self-select. Those that can't follow the rules will be gone. So then the question comes, do I accept students who, whose parents want them there or the students that want to be there? If I say students that want to be there, how many kids really know what they want? And how many kids are going to say, yes, I want to leave all my friends in public school and now come to this Christian school where I have to wear a uniform. See, yeah, we had uniforms. And I have to go to a Bible class. <coughs> Do they really know what they want? Do we accept kids sometimes because the parents want, us, want them to be there? We do. Should we? Yes. Oh, I've had, I've had kids in my boarding school that their parents did not want them to be there. I was one of those kids. My dad wasn't an Adventist. My mom was not a strong personality. My dad said, absolutely, you will not go to an Adventist school. I live 20 minutes from, a, from an academy. You will not go to an Adventist school. If you get a free public education that's good enough for me, it's going to be good enough for you. Heard that before? I did that for 12 years. Came time for college. And I said, I'm going to Andrews University. No, you're not. You're going to University of Michigan Flint. It's a good school, high quality school. That's where you're going to school. And I said, no, I'm going to Andrews University. You go to Andrews University, you don't get one dime from me, ever. And I went to Andrews University. Do we get have kids that make those kinds of stands for academies? We do. This is a, something that you're going to have to wrestle with yourself. But I want to open up to you that in general, I believe that if you define your mission clearly and in general, and I agree that we have to take, I'm not going to call them charity cases, but, but cases outside of that defined mission, Jesus would and I, I, I cannot put myself, David, in that position in which I'm Jesus and know that those are the 12 that I should accept. Even though only 11 made it. You see? That's right. Um, I believe that we need to accept kids outside of that mission box that we draw. But yet... Yes. Is it different from say when going back to that chapter when you said that Jesus saw the disciples not having the Lord because they didn't come? That's right. And we need to do that with kids, don't we? We need to look and see what they can become, not just what they are right now. And I'm so glad that Jesus Christ does that for me. Because I would be a very worthless person even how I am. But through his grace, we can be better than we are, right? Any saints here? Are any of you saints? I am. I'm a saint. A sinner who has fallen down by the grace and power of Jesus Christ, gotten back up again. That's the definition. That's the biblical definition of a saint. And you know, we have saints on our campuses all over the place. Every kid is a saint in Jesus' eyes. Whether they're mission appropriate or not. Now let me hasten to say that I believe every child, specifically every Adventist child, deserves an Adventist education. Every Adventist child deserves an Adventist education. Right. Now, does that mean...